making a round collar. This collar consists of three layers of fabric. The upper and under collar layers cut from fashion fabric, plus one layer of interfacing which is cut the same size and shape as the two collar pieces. Notice that the stitching line has been traced onto the interfacing layer to serve as a stitching guide. The interfacing is placed to the wrong side of the upper collar. Be sure that the two layers are flat and smooth, and then pin them together around the outside edges of the collar. The interfacing is placed against the upper collar so that it will keep the seam allowances from leaving a ridge on the right side of the collar when the collar is finished. Stitch these two layers together approximately one half inch in from the cut edge, or this would be about one eighth of an inch from the marked seam line. Stitch around the outer edges of the collar, but leave the neck edge or notched edge free. Notice that this stitching is about one eighth inch from the traced marking. Trim the interfacing close to the stitching, or you may prefer to wait and layer the seam allowances after the upper and under collar pieces have been stitched together. With right sides together, pin the upper collar, which is the top layer, to the under collar starting at center back. In this case, center back was marked by a small notch into the seam allowance. Notice that the under collar extends about 1 8 inch on the outer edge as the two layers are being pinned together. This will make the under collar slightly smaller, which will prevent the under collar from showing on the right side when the collar is finished. The under collar extends this 1 8 inch on all sides of the collar except at the neck edge where the edges should be even. Stitch the outer edge of the collar seam together, again leaving the neck edge or notched edge open. Stitch slowly and accurately, using the traced marking as your stitching guide. To help reduce bulk inside the collar, layer the seam allowances, making the under collar seam allowance the narrowest. Notch the seam allowances in the curved areas. To get a smooth curve, make the notches small, but place them close together, maybe about every one half inch, in the areas where the collar has the most curve. Notice that the notches are kept small and placed fairly close together. Before turning the collar, understitch the seam allowances to the under collar. Place the stitching on the under collar side and stitch about 1 16th of an inch from the seam line. Hold the fabric taut away from the seam line as you stitch. Turn the collar right side out, carefully manipulating the curve, pushing the seam out to the edge as you work. You will need to spend more time working on those areas that you were unable to understitch. Press the collar from the under collar side, rolling the seam slightly to the wrong side. The curves on the collar should be nice and smooth and should be identical in shape on the two sides of the collar. making a pointed collar. This technique for making a pointed collar is used on collars in which the upper and under collars are cut from the same pattern piece. The interfacing is also cut the same size and shape as the upper collar. Notice that the stitching line has been traced onto the interfacing layer to serve as a stitching guide. Place the interfacing to the wrong side of the upper collar. Be sure that the two layers are flat and smooth, and then pin them together around the outside edges of the collar. The interfacing is placed against the upper collar so that it will keep the seam allowances from leaving a ridge to the right side when the collar is finished. To help remove bulk from the collar points, 
Trim the interfacing at the corners to just inside the stitching line. You will probably want to omit this step when working on sheer fabrics. Stitch the two layers together approximately one half inch from the cut edge. Stitch around the outer edges of the collar, but leave the neck edge or notched edge open. Notice that the stitching is about one eighth inch away from the trace marking, which is within the seam allowance so it will not show after the upper and under collars have been stitched together. Trim the interfacing close to the stitching line, or you may prefer to wait and layer the seam allowances after the upper and under collar pieces have been stitched together. Do not trim the interfacing from the seam allowance at the neck edge. Notice that the interfacing was not stitched at the neck edge. With right sides together, pin the upper collar, which is the top layer, to the under collar along the back or outer seam only. The outside edges of the collar should be even. Remember, do not pin or stitch the ends of the collar at this time. Stitch these two layers together, 5 eighths of an inch from the raw edge, using the marked seam line as your stitching guide. Start the stitching at the very edge of the collar and continue stitching the full length of the collar piece. Then layer or grade the seam allowance. If the seam is curved, also clip at regular intervals to the stitching line. Understitch along the seam, stitching the seam allowance to the under collar. Place the stitching on the under collar side and stitch about 1 16th of an inch from the seam line. Now we are ready to stitch the collar ends. When folding the collar right sides together, it is important to fold the outer seam towards the under collar side. Pin the end seam near the collar point. When pinning the rest of the seam, extend the under collar about 1 8 inch. This helps to make the under collar slightly smaller so that it won't show when the collar is completed. Stitch the collar end seam following the marked stitching line. Secure the threads first by back stitching. The original stitching no longer will show once the stitching has been completed. Notice that the neckline edges may be uneven. This will be corrected when attaching the collar. To reduce bulk at the point, trim all layers of the seam allowance diagonally at the corner close to the machine stitching. Then press the end seam open using a point presser, or if one is not available, just use the tip of the iron laying the collar on the ironing board. You will find that this pressing really helps getting the seam pressed flat after the collar is turned. Before turning the collar, layer the seam allowances, making the under collar seam allowance the narrowest. The upper collar seam allowance may be left the full width or trimmed just slightly. Turn the collar right side out, carefully working out the corner. To get a really sharp corner, pull out the corner by taking a small stitch with the needle and thread and carefully pulling out the corner. Or push the corner out from the inside by using a large needle or hat pin. The final step is to press the collar rolling the seam slightly to the under collar side as you press. The finished collar should have nice sharp points which are identical on the two sides of the collar with no under collar showing on the right side of the completed collar. Making a neckband collar. The neckband collar shown on this tape has the neckband cut in one with the collar. The interfacing was cut the same size and shape as the collar pieces. Notice that the stitching line has been transferred to the interfacing layer to serve as a guide for final stitching. Place the interfacing to the wrong side of the upper collar and pin around the outer edges. The interfacing is placed against the upper collar 
so that it will act as a cushion and keep the seam allowances from leaving a ridge on the right side when the collar is finished. If you have a pointed collar, trim the interfacing at the corners to just inside the stitching line. You would want to omit this step on sheer fabric. Stitch the interfacing to the upper collar about one half inch from the raw edge or about one eighth inch from the marked seam line. Leave the needle in the fabric and pivot at the point where the neckband joins the collar. Stitch to the collar point and again pivot and continue stitching around the outer three sides. Trim the interfacing close to the machine stitching or you may prefer to wait and layer all seam allowances once the two collars have been stitched together. Notice that the neck edge or notched edge was not stitched. The interfacing should not be trimmed from the neckline seam allowance of the collar. If the collar is round at the outer edge, use the technique described for making a round collar. When the collar is pointed, follow these techniques suggested for a pointed collar. With right sides together, pin the upper collar, which is the top layer, to the under collar along the back or outer seam only. The outside edges should be even. Do not pin nor stitch the ends of the collar at this time. Stitch these two layers together 5 8 inch from the raw edge using the marked seam line as your stitching guide. Start the stitching at the edge of the collar and continue stitching the full length of the collar seam. Then layer or grade seam allowances. If the seam is curved, also clip at regular intervals to the stitching line. Understitch along this seam, stitching the seam allowances to the under collar. Place the stitching on the under collar side and stitch about 1 16th inch from the seam line. Fold the collar right sides together and pin the end seam. It is important that the outer seam be turned towards the under collar. Pin the end seam close at that point. Then pin the rest of the seam with the two layers flat and smooth. Notice that the outer seam has been folded towards the under collar. Stitch the collar ends following the marked stitching line. It is important to exactly follow the marked stitching line so that the front edges of the collar will be identical on the two sides of the collar. Carefully pivot at the point where the collar and neckband join and continue stitching down to the neck edge. To reduce bulk at the point, trim all layers of the seam allowance diagonally at the corner close to the machine stitching. Also clip into the seam allowance at the corner where the collar and the band meet. This clip must go all the way to the stitching line. You might find it easiest to press the seam open at this time before layering the seam allowance. Use the point presser or just use the tip of the iron if you are laying the collar directly on the ironing board. Layer the collar seam allowances remembering that the under collar seam allowance is the narrowest. The upper collar seam allowance can be trimmed just a little or it can be left the full 5 8 inch. Layer the seam allowances around the curved end of the band in the same manner. If there is an interfacing layer, it can be left the widest. To reduce bulk in the curved area, the seam allowances must be notched. Make the notches fairly small, but place them close together, about every one fourth inch. and now the collar should be ready to turn. After turning the collar and carefully pushing out the collar point, press the collar from the under collar side. The seam on the collar portion should be rolled slightly to the under collar side. The seam on the band area should be right along the edge. Attaching a flat or partial roll collar. A flat or partial roll collar has a curved neck edge and is usually attached to the garment with a fitted neck facing. 
Stay stitch the neckline edge of the garment and interface the front facing. Attach the back facing to the front facing at the shoulder seam. Finish the outer edge of the facing with a finish suitable to the fabric. If the neckline edges of the collar are uneven, trim away the excess but do retain the notches. Machine stitch all layers of the collar together at the neck edge about one half inch from the raw edge. This stitching helps to control all these layers when attaching the collar to the garment. Pin all layers of the collar to the right side of the bodice neckline. Notice that the under collar will be next to the right side of the bodice. Pin by matching center back, notches, and the front of the collar to the designated marking on the bodice front. In most cases, the front edge of the collar will extend all the way to the center front line. Hand or machine stitch the front edge of the collar to the designated marking on the bodice to hold the collar securely in place. Notice that the hand stitching is kept within the seam allowance. You would do this step on both right and left sides of the collar front. Then lay the right side of the facing over the collar, again matching the notches, center back, and shoulder seams of the facing to the shoulder seams of the garment. Be sure to fold the facing on the fold line marking as designated on the pattern. All layers should be flat and smooth. Now stitch the entire neckline seam, back stitching at each end to secure the threads. This stitching should be 5 8 inch from the cut edge or just inside the stay stitching. Be sure that you remove the pins as you do the machine stitching. Layer all of the seam allowances at the neck edge making each layer a little wider than the next. Usually the garment neckline seam allowance is left the longest. Clip the seam allowances around the neck edge to but not through the stitching line. This would extend along the entire neckline seam. Reduce bulk wherever there is a stitched seam allowance by trimming the ends of the seam allowances from the seam line. Understitching can be used to help hold the facing in place. Turn the neckline seam allowances towards the facing and stitch about 1 16th of an inch from the seam line. Hold the fabric taut away from the seam line as you stitch. Carefully press this area and complete the facing by attaching the facing to the bodice at the shoulder seam only. This can be done with a small hand stitch that just catches the shoulder seam allowance. The completed collar should be smooth and flat along the neckline seam. Both sides of the collar front should be identical in shape. Attaching a full roll collar. The method described in this tape shows attaching the full roll collar without a back neck facing. The front facing is interfaced and the edge is finished with a method suitable to the fabric. The neckline is stay stitched about one half inch from the raw edge. Clip the neckline seam allowance at regular intervals to the stay stitching. This step is necessary 
since the neck edge on the collar is straight and the garment neckline is curved. Notice how the seam allowance spreads and the seam line can be opened up to form a straight line. To help all layers of the collar fall correctly after the collar has been attached, fold the collar near the row line and pin through all layers close to this fold. When folding the collar, the upper collar must be the top layer. Notice that the layers may not match at the neck edge of the collar. You can trim away the excess, but remember to retain the notches as you trim. To attach the collar, pick up the under collar and interfacing layers and pin to the right side of the bodice neckline, starting first at center back and working towards the shoulder seam. Usually there is a dot on the collar pattern indicating the point on the collar that matches the shoulder of the bodice. This pinning usually extends from shoulder seam to shoulder seam across the back neck edge. Stitch this area of the neckline seam, stitching from the bodice side, using the stay stitching as your stitching guide. The stitching usually goes from shoulder seam to shoulder seam, but it may extend slightly beyond the shoulder seam if the front facing on the bodice does not extend that far. When attaching the collar to the front neck area, pin all layers of the collar together to the neckline seam of the garment, matching the notches. Be sure that the front edge of the collar lines up with a designated marking on the garment front, which may be the center front. Hand stitch the front edge of the collar in place to keep the collar from shifting when pinning the facing. If this stitching is kept within the seam allowance, it will not show after the collar is completed. Now fold the front facing over the collar with right sides together. Be sure that you are folding the facing on the fold line as designated on the pattern. Pin the facing along the neckline matching the notches. This facing usually extends to the shoulder seam. Stitch the remaining portion of the neckline seam, back stitching to secure the threads. Again use the stay stitching as your guide. This stitching should join up with the previous stitching along the back neck edge area at the shoulder seam. To reduce bulk along the neck seam, layer the seam allowances. It is also necessary to clip through all layers to the final stitching line. Carefully push out the front corners and check to see that both sides of the garment front are identical in shape. At the point where the front facing ends, it is necessary to clip all layers of the seam allowance to the stitching line. Fold up the seam allowance into the collar along the back neckline. Bring the upper collar down over the seam allowance. Fold under the neckline seam allowance of the upper collar so the folded edge lies just above the stitching line. This placement is important so that the hand stitching does not show from the right side. To complete the collar, hand stitch the upper collar with a blind stitch, sliding the needle through the neckline seam allowances when taking each stitch so that most of the thread will be hidden under the top layer of fabric. Notice that this stitching is located just above the neckline seam line. Also hand stitch the end of the front facing to the shoulder seam. The completed collar should be smooth and flat along the neckline seam and both sides of the collar front should be identical in shape. Attaching a neckband collar.
To prepare the bodice for attaching the collar, interface the front and finish the raw edge of the facing with a method suitable to the fabric. Fold back the front facing along the fold line marking and pin in place at the neck edge. Clip the neckline seam allowance to the stay stitching. This is necessary since the neck edge and the collar is straight and the garment neck edge is curved. These clips should extend around the entire neckline seam allowance. To help all layers of the collar fall correctly after the collar is attached, fold the collar near the row line and pin through all layers close to the fold. Remember the upper collar should be on top. These pins should stay in the collar until the collar has been completely attached. Notice that the collar layers may not be even along the neck edge. You can trim away the excess to match the upper collar, but remember to retain the notches. Pin the right side of the under collar plus the interfacing layer to the right side of the garment neckline, starting at center back. The center back of the collar and bodice can be marked with either a small clip or notch when cutting out the pattern pieces. Match center back, front notch, and shoulder seam markings, keeping the raw edges even as you pin. Notice how the neckline seam allowance of the bodice spreads to fit the neck edge of the collar. On the neckband collar, it is particularly important that the front seam line of the collar match exactly with the fold line on the bodice. The point for matching should be at the 5 8 inch seam line. It may be helpful to hold the collar in place with hand stitching, since the positioning of the collar is critical at this point. If the stitching is kept within the seam allowance, it will not show after the neck edge has been machine stitched. Starting at the front edge, and with the garment side up, machine stitch the neckline seam, stitching just to the inside of the stay stitching. Remember to keep the upper collar layer out of the way as you stitch the neckline seam. Layer or grade the seam allowances, making each layer a little wider than the next, to help reduce bulk along the neckline seam allowance. Bulk is also a problem at the front corner. This can be reduced by trimming the seam allowance diagonally across the corner. Then turn the seam allowances into the collar and fold under the seam allowance of the upper collar. The folded edge of the upper collar should just cover the previous machine stitching in the area of the front facing without having the machine stitching show. With careful hand stitching, you can wear the collar either open or closed. The folded edge of the upper collar should be just above the machine stitching around the remainder of the neckline seam line, so that the hand stitching will not show from the outside of the garment. To complete the collar, hand stitch along the neck edge using a small blind or slip stitch. Hide most of your thread by either sliding the needle through the fold of the collar or through the neckline seam allowances. The stitches should be kept small and as invisible as possible. A single or a double thread could be used. Since this collar style is worn both closed and open, you will want to be careful that no hand stitching shows on the inside of the collar. The process for attaching the collar could be reversed by first machine stitching the inside seam or upper collar and hand stitching the outside or under collar. 